Good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are, whenever you are. Welcome back to the channel, Birch Bay, episode two. Uh, it's really exciting. It's not your conventional episode two. You're probably looking at it saying, Sculptor, wait a minute, how can you have an episode two when the city is almost done? Well, we took a little unconventional approach. First of all, I started streaming with my last episode oh, last week, and I've never done it before. So I'm learning how to do that, especially as we start counting down to the launch of City Skylines 2. Super excited about that, just as I know that you are as well. But episode two, as I mentioned in episode one, if you haven't had a chance to view that episode, go back and take a look at that. But episode two of Birch Bay, Birch Bay is a city that I created as kind of my wind down of City Skylines in preparation for City Skylines 2. It is, what did I call it, a swan song? A swan song of a build that takes you out of city skylines and then on into city skylines too. And I built this city on the coastal flatlands map. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here so you can get a good feel for what this map looks like. This is uh, a map that came with the Hotels and Retreats DLC. I love this map. I love this map and for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons is that the map lends itself really, really well to new builders. And what I mean by that is you've got this wonderful coastline, and I dig a coastline map. As somebody who lives in the heartland of America, the, in the middle of the United States, in what some places that uh, the people on the coast would call it flyover country, because <laughs> it's the place that you fly over to get from one coast to the other coast. But we affectionately call it God's country. We love it. This, 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 this fruited plain that is nestled between the Appalachian Mountains and the Rocky Mountains. So when I see a coastal map, I get excited because we don't have a lot of coasts in the center part of the United States. We have them down on the Gulf Coast, you know, the Gulf of Mexico, which is a beautiful coast. And then we also have some shorelines up in the Great Lakes. And if you've never been to the Great Lakes area, uh, it's, it's just a fabulous, beautiful area. So I envision this map is to be probably on, on one of the Great Lakes just kind of has that look and feel, that vibe. It doesn't seem like overly tropical. But one of the things I love about this map is you can see that you've got this wonderful shoreline that you can develop. And then you've got this river that meanders through it and follows along the shoreline, runs parallel to the shoreline. And I would imagine that as it trickles off the bottom of the map, it probably heads out to the shore and, and, and spills out into this, uh, this body of water. And then it also forks right here. So it almost kind of gives you a Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania feel uh, that, that what they call the confluence, I guess, of the Ohio. No, no, it's the Ohio that forms out of the, I, I can't remember. Your geography whiz is out there. You can tell me what it is. But uh, I set up kind of a similar type of an area in terms of just putting some walking parks and the trams, uh, what we call light rails uh, in, my, in my part of the world run through there as well with a nice key structure. And then you've also got some ferries that shuttle up and down the river. But I love this map because it sets itself up really nicely for, for beginning builders. You've got lots of interest in geography and topography to work with. And it's also fairly flat in the grand scheme of things. So that makes it you know, an, an easy map to build on if you were looking to build out larger, uh, larger cities. Now, Birch Bay, is a city of about 76,000 people. And it got its start over here. Uh, this, is, this is a starting square down in this area here. Got its start over here. And one of the things that I like to focus on when I'm building out my cities is I, I want to make sure that I've identified on the map where I wanted to have my downtown early on. And, and we did that. And I chose this section over here because over here because I thought it nestled in nicely between the river and the shore without being right on the shore. Uh, you know, it still has beautiful views. So I envision if you're sitting up in one of these skyscrapers and you're, you're looking out, you've got quite the spectacular view. Well, I just, you know, let's, let's take a look around. You've got a beautiful shoreline view and you've got the, the harbor and uh, you look down south of the stadium district and then the river continues along. So I think it's quite a spectacular view from downtown. And our downtown 
while it's obvious and prominent, it's not overwhelming to this city. Again, as I mentioned, 76,000 or so people. I wanted to, to have the look and feel of a mid-size uh, city. You know, um, it would be really easy to, to, to build up that downtown area into this massive wall of glass and steel, but I don't think this city is ready for that yet because it's a st city that's still under evolution. So as you go back to our starting area here, which is was kind of down in here, the city has grown and evolved, and there are some nice low-lying residential areas, kind of the, the suburbs that are sitting out here. And then as you look back into town, you get the uh, obvious downtown. And the steady build, if you will, of layers and heights as you work your way up closer to downtown, it just gets taller and taller until it peaks out with that beautiful green glass structure in the middle of, of downtown. Now, getting in and out of downtown, that has been uh, really a fun part of the build. Uh, you can see prominently running along the shore is what I call Chestnut Boulevard. And that is a major four-lane road, but you can see that the light rails, the trams run through the trams. Tram. That's a word I can't get used to. Tram. Got to call it tram. 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 Okay, back to the light rail. <laughs> um, so th this, this tram runs up and down the coastline and shore and allows people in the neighborhoods that are adjacent to that tram line to get to and from easily up and down the shoreline where the city sprawls. And then running kind of parallel to that, that tram line is this high-speed train line. It's elevated, and I've got an elevated solution here because it just made it a lot easier to get in and out. And it runs all the way from the northern part of the city, way out here, the northern part of our city, on down. As I'll go with the mouse here, it runs down along, sort of parallel to our tram line, and then it carves inland a little bit to cut around a zoo and then ultimately ends up back rejoining the tram line in the downtown area just to the coastal side of downtown. And then eventually it meanders down along uh, and gets you to the stadium district where it'll continue to feed the stadium district and maybe some points beyond, not sure yet. But it does not connect to the outside world. That outside world line, uh, the, I guess you'd call it a national line, actually comes in from a different direction. Uh, it sneaks in through past our industrial areas here. And as you can see, it winds and zips past our university village and then uh, ultimately comes in from the other side of downtown to this terminus station right here in downtown. And that is our only inter intercity train line. Uh, so if you're coming in from out of, out of the town, you're going to dump into this station, which is a lovely station on a nice park with our clock tower. And you get an immediate access to your bus station here that takes you up and down the little Kirby Mall area. And then over to the, the metro station. The subway station. And the subway feeds to a variety of different points all around the city. So that's the kind of general layout of, of Birch Bay and, and the, the transportation management getting in and out of the downtown. As you can see, we don't have a lot of traffic build up because uh, we've got a lot of residents that are using and taking advantage of their public transportation. This used to clog up pretty regularly, but it's you can see it's free flowing now. And then also there's some space down over here uh, as the couplet uh, the, the freeway system dumps off into the cutlet and then ultimately onto university, to the university square. There's, they, they, there can be some bottlenecks in here, but not too bad. Not too bad, really. So that's our downtown area uh, right here in, in Birch Bay. And I think it's, it's very functional. Um, it, in, my, it, in my view, it's, 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 it's pretty lovely. Again, it's, it's obvious, it's prominent, but it's not overstated. It's a, a modest downtown build. Fits in really well with this type of a with this type of a city. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to zip on over to this area of the map that I call Queen Anne Park. And um, I wanna just kind of call out some details. The area that we're gonna be focusing on is this spot that really runs from these rocks here along this area Across this uh, arterial road, collector road, and then is bordered again by this little, I don't know, kind of like a semi-couplet park area that extends out into the National Seashore. You can see the, the sand paths, the uh, walking trails all along the National Seashore. So that's a, that's a really great little escape area. And what I envision with this space here is 
you see some ruins in here, I mean, some old ruins and houses. I, uh, in you know, kind of the way I'm looking at this is this is the these are some of the, maybe the original um, fishing shanties that would be still in that space. Um, I, I, you know, I personally, when I s encounter this sort of stuff on a map, I like to save as much of it as I can. I like to repurpose it as as much as I can. In fact, I have another area in, in a different part of the town here where we've got our, our big zoo, and I've got some of these buildings that I've preserved. For the purposes of this build, I'm probably going to take them out. I'm probably going to tear them out and, uh, you know, just kind of, yeah, let's just pretend they don't, they <laughs> pretend they don't exist. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to do that, and then we're going to build in this space. We're going to use the European theme in this space. We're going to build some what I would call stately mansions. Uh, maybe the uh, the residences of some rail barons and or shipping magnates, you know, kind of the upper crusty part of society, as it were. Um, <laughs> that, you know, this is an area, an old money kind of area, part of town, where maybe the, the, the original uh, wealthy people settled to have their you know their summer homes that are away from the hustle and bustle of say a, a huge metropolitan area into this a little bit more refined space and we'll, we'll create some larger backyards with some some high attention to detail in those yards uh, as well and really um, I probably drop in something like um, I don't know some some older buildings that kind of fit in with that theme just to create a, a, a you know nestle in this 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 really high society kind of old money neighborhood. And then as I transition down the shore here, and this may be for another day, uh, we'll see. Uh, this area that, that you see between these rocks and these rocks is going to be known as Sturgeon Square. And Sturgeon Square is, in, you know, in, in my design here, is going to be a combination of industrial evolution, so old, old school brick factories, warehouses, that sort of stuff, that's in transition to the Green Cities DLC content. So what you'll see is kind of a, a vibe that gives you these old brick buildings that are maybe in the process of being reclaimed and turning into lofts and, and, and you know, artisan markets and shopping. Uh, there'll be some Green Cities shops in there. There'll be some Green Cities homes built in there. And so it'll have this this feel of a neighborhood that's under evolution, going from old world to, you know, hip new world. And then eventually we'll, we'll continue down southward along the coast, and this will become our cargo port and hub as we continue to extend down southward through a factory build area and then ultimately into a fishing harbor down here. Uh, we got a lot of ground to cover over the next handful of episodes or, or, or two, you know, two handfuls, maybe, I don't know, it's a dozen, before City Skylines 2 launches. It's a lot of work to do in this process, so I'm super excited about it. And then turning our eye to the stadium district here, you'll see uh, how this is, gr is kind of a shape of a grid that we're heading off in this direction, but I want to bend that grid. I want to I come off this collector street. I'd like this collector street to come up and then ultimately bend into this and try and route some of the heavier traffic off of this, this intersection here. We'll have those two connect up there because we're gonna have heavier traffic coming in out of our, our cargo port. And then we'll reorient this grid a little bit so it follows more along the line of that train track and then cuts across here and, and back down in. So we'll just, we'll tidy that up in one of our episodes and then we'll look across the freeway to an area over here where I'm hoping to put in some Heart of Korea uh, build in this space to really kind of make it stand out, look a little different from what's been going on. So as you can see, we've got, you know, we've got a few things that we need to do before we move on to City Skylines 2. And oh, this, this is just, this screams Nature Reserve Park, doesn't it? I, I, I think it does. I think it does. So that could be kind of a fun camping and, and reserve area. And then we're going to need to put in some utilities down here. I think some helicopters, depots and so forth. But back to, you know, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted, sculptor. Back to what we got to do today, and that's to clean this area up in here. And we'll, so we'll start by uh, just doing a couple of things. I'm going to start by jumping in and deleting out some of this. Uh, this uh, and just 
to kind of tidy up the space a little bit as we cut the bill. And then I want to drop in and smoothie smooth out the uh, smooth out the shoreline a little bit. You know, let's let's kind of create a, a uniform uh, elevation along the shoreline. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe that's a little too low, but you know, kind of come in here. And uh, then I want to take and s extend that out to the edge of the rocks here. So ultimately, we want to create a defined space. And that defined space, I'm going to go a little bit bigger here. I'm going to bring the, the, the elevation slope down here nice and gently. And we're going to just repeat that process. We're going to repeat that process over here. So we've got a nice smooth uh, slope. And then we're going to do the same thing coming down over here. And ultimately, yeah, I'll try to just jump back in and, and tidy that up a little bit so we can have a shoreline road. And then we'll smooth this area coming in through here. OK. Now, I'm going to do something a little weird here, something a little unorthodox, maybe. I'm going to actually jump into and grab a medium road, one of our median roads. Because what I think about is this area is going to connect across over to here. And I want to do so with, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a grass boulevard that, uh, you know, grass median strip boulevard with some bike lanes that drops into here. And the reason I want to do that is, is I envision that as maybe it was the old original kind of main, the main drag, so to speak, uh, that culminated in a town square area, just kind of right here. I'm thinking just like a little town square with a, a, a parky type area behind it as acting as a buffer to get you to Sturgeon Square so that maybe you have walk, pedestrian access through there, but maybe you don't drive through. And then Sur Sturgeon Square will come off of of our new Chestnut Boulevard up here. So that's where we're that's where we're going with that. So we'll we'll connect in here a you know just kind of a regular road and work our way down. And and what I want to do here is I want to I want to come out a little bit and then um, so I want to take this road and now angle it down along the coastline here. So it becomes a clearly defined shoreline road and really you know a pr prestigious road to have your home on I think and then we're going to come down into here and then we're ultimately going to angle it back up in like that all right so now you see the kind of the general footprint of the neighborhood what we're talking about here but we're going to do something a little different I think as I mentioned I've already flagged Queen Anne Park let's make sure for European, right? Yes, I did. Okay, excellent. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna come in here and um, we're gonna build out. We're gonna take this high density residential, and we're only gonna grab these two squares here, and then we're gonna skip over those two squares. We're gonna leave one there, and we're gonna go two squares here. And then we're going to skip over those three squares. We're going to leave two more there. And we're going to add these two squares here. And there's a little method to my madness. Uh, and and the, that method is what I ultimately see happening here is I'm going to get these elegant gates, as our family likes to call elegant. These are very elegant. And so we'll, we'll drive that up so that they have these larger, larger yards. And, you know, we can bring that across. And then, you know, actually maybe what we'll do is we'll come up from this one right here. And we'll bring that across. And then you start to get the look and feel of a much larger yard, a much larger presence. Ooh, I like the look of that home. I mean, doesn't that look like a stately old kind of multi-story mansion? I mean, you know, if you were a, a railroad baron or a shipping magnate or, you know, a... Uh, Somebody who comes from old money, wouldn't you want a stately old mansion like that? I would. I mean, yeah, maybe someday. <laughs> but uh, you, you get the picture is that, is that these are going to be really large in scope estates for this area that will kind of culminate in a, uh, in, you know, I don't know, maybe a, a city park, a city um, square. So let's just go ahead and start dropping in some of these residentials. I don't want it to be exactly mirrored on the other side of the street. Maybe I'll only come in one this side and then I'll come in over here and we'll make, we'll give it a four gap and we'll, eh, no, maybe not. Maybe, maybe we'll give it a three gap and then we'll uh, come back here and we'll do like a two and three and then maybe a full four. You know, you, you get the picture, right? 
We'll start painting these things in and see what we come up with. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's let's come on to our next step. Those, that's, we're going to let that grow up a little bit. Okay, we've moved that back now. We're going to come out of here. Uh, let's go out. 12-ish. Let's go 10. Let's just go 10. Just run it right around the back. It'll be super simple, super straightforward, super easy. And we're going to take this out, right come down and across, and then we're going to do the same thing. Back behind it, we're going to come out 10, we're going to go 10, whatever that number is, eh, more than 10, and bring that in. And now we've got kind of a, a, a buffer area, if you will, between Sturgeon Square and Queen Anne Park. We're going to drop in a couple of things we want to drop in. I think one of them we should drop in is, what do you think, like a, a an old school resort, uh, what do you call it, like uh, one of the resorts or inns or whatever, something that looks, yeah, like this. Oh, does that fit in here? It doesn't, but it, I bet it fits right about, uh, it doesn't. Oh, no. Okay, well, that's okay. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. We're going we're gonna to squeeze it in. Maybe it's an inn, uh, an inn on the park. I don't know. I, I like that. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll drop it down in here because then it can overlook the uh, kind of the seashore, right? Very, very beautiful. You can see out there. All right. So we've got a nice resort that we're dropping in there. We'll cut in some more of uh, these, these estate-type buildings that are maybe flanking our city hall area. No, you know, you know what? I don't want to put it back there. But I will drop one in here. I'll drop one in here. And then we'll come back in. You know, a couple of them. Just maybe some smaller ones. <laughs> small. Listen to me. They're like four-story homes. Yeah. Uh, not, I mean, that's not small, small, but it's it's smaller than some. <laughs> All right. So we've got those painted in, and we're going to drop in one right... No, nah, we're going to leave that open. I'm going to leave that open. We'll drop in a couple here that look in towards our city hall. So these are a little bit more, maybe a little bit more modest. I don't know. Uh, and yeah, that'll be that'll be the way we flesh that out. Now I'm gonna again, I'm gonna take this space and I'm gonna make it just a kind of a plaza space, maybe an open with some crosswalks and sidewalks and so forth. And I think what I'll do is is just leave this space open um, and and put in some green belt here to to break up between Sturgeon Square and Queen Anne Park. So I think. Uh, I think with all of that kind of done, we're ready for a detailing time lapse because we got uh, we got some work to do just in, in fleshing out the space. So, all right, well, I'll address that in the in the rest of it. But let's go jump into a detailing time lapse. Let's get this thing built out and create the stately Queen Anne Park area of Birch Bay. All right, we'll be back in a little bit.
Hey, hey, welcome back from the uh, from the detailing time lapse. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed creating it. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So you're looking at the finished product here now. This is Queen Anne uh, Park. And it's very, very different, very, very different than a lot of the rest of the build here in Birch Bay. And the intent here was to create, carve out a little section of the town that was exclusively reserved for the upper crust of our society. <laughs> the, the railroad barons, the shipping magnates, uh, the, the, you know, the, the high-powered millionaire, dare I say billionaires maybe, of Birch Bay that could build their beautiful seaside resorts along the shore and uh, and and bring their families and or generations of families uh, to this this wonderful wonderful city, and so with that, um, you know, let's take a quick look. You can see the look and feel here. That you like larger yards, a lot more detailing in the in the landscaping, etc. In contrast to across Chestnut Boulevard, where you've got the um, you know the wall to wall buildings, and then just up the shore where you've got. Um, Brickyard Heights, which features our Brooklyn and Queens um, type of structures. So obviously a very different type of uh, segment of our community in here. And um, the intent was to, to make sure that they had some beautiful estates. So let's take a look at those estates before we dive in too deeply. This broad boulevard here, Again, I, I envision as the remnants of the old main street that came, kind of ran through here that has been since surpassed by Chestnut Boulevard with their light rail trams running up and down the spine of the city. Um, but this is these are the re remnants, and so it culminates in City Hall down here at the end, and we'll, we'll go through City Hall here in a little bit. But uh, our, first si our first home... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to take you through all of them, but I want to call out a few highlights. We, we jumped right in and we put some tiling in there and we've got this little gravel path that takes you out to the gazebo. And it's a nice little oasis, if you will, um, you, you know, pretty close to Chestnut, but uh, just some elegant elements here. Our second home, we added a water feature with some plantings around and a little concrete walking path that took you around. But then we tried to mix it up with some color and variation in the plantings up front. So as passerbys walked through, they thought this was a, an interesting, nice, clean and colorful look. And then our third uh, yard, we put some stone features in here, a water uh, fountain. We got some fruit trees. Fruit trees make their appearance in Birch Bay in the uh, Queen Anne Park neighborhood. And, um, you know, I just wanted to add some gravel in here just, just to make it a little bit, make it feel like it was you know, perhaps constructed 150, maybe 200 years ago, and it's been a while. Okay, so let's jump down to the next row of homes here. Uh, this use of tile was a little different. I wanted to use this tile as almost like um, kind of a limestone retaining wall sort of a look. You know, it looks like limestone uh, uh, blocks to me, and so there was a, a sharper break off down here of the uh, I guess you, you kind of you call it uh, the, the topography. There's a little bit of a rough edge to it. So I wanted to mask that a little bit with some of this limestone, and it, it ends up being a really nice retaining wall uh, type of feature. As we moved uh, down the road, again, another uh, gazebo with some stone, and uh, you've got a number of, um, in this next yard, rocks, different different colored plantings. Again, we tried to have some variation of the plantings, but this one I thought was a lot of fun. This one we did a parquet pattern with our tiles, and then we had some planter boxes. I used planter boxes. Now that one looks like it's been eaten by the hill. I'm not, not sure. Maybe we got a landslide. I, <laughs> I don't know. Call in the engineers. Um, and we used planter boxes along the edge to frame up this parquet tile. And uh, you've got a water feature, a little picnic bench, and more more picnic bench and more of those planter boxes ultimately coming around that corner and giving some definition with some uh, birch trees in Birch Bay. So uh, that was a that was a nice one and, and then we came in here and used more tile again a little limestone look and followed by the the mossy green and and I want to call this out. It's actually two different elevations. So you're down here at uh, at the home level and then you step up this path and you work your way up and I've got a nice a zoo fence that I used here is to, to call out this, this you know, upper tier, if you will, of, uh, of backyard, all framed in nicely with some, some hedges and some flowers. And then if you look back into the corner of the yard, 
right? A nice shade tree, some planting, some some moss area, ferns, I guess, ferns, uh, ground cover, just to to give it a softer look and feel. Now here's the next one is is a lot of fun. Uh, I thought, you know, why not give uh, put a couple of soccer nets, soccer goals, uh, football goals, nets for you guys that are in the UK. Those are football football goals. <laughs> we call them soccer, whatever you want to call them, they're fun. So I envision the kids going out in the backyard, kicking a ball around and having a really nice time. And speaking of kids, the yard up above theirs, and we'll, we'll, see, we'll get what I mean when I say above in just a second, has some playground equipment. So you've got littler kids here, maybe some teenage kids in here. And let's talk about up versus down. Let's get in real close here. So as you're on the shore, as you're down here, let's get right down here into this park. You can see that you've got some tiering going on here, uh, meaning you've got you got homes that are right along at shore level, and then behind them you see some elevation coming up with the homes that are behind them. And ultimately, you can see peeking through there the wall-to-wall -wall buildings and the city hall. So you can see there's there's some definite change in the elevation, and as you move out, it becomes a little bit more apparent. But you've got some tall trees here that really call attention to, hey, there's, there's different levels uh, going on back here. So uh, really fun there, really fun. This yard I really enjoyed as well because I wanted to give them a, uh, a side yard that had these beautiful water features to a pair of fountains, a couple of boulders, some plants, some trees, some color, and again, different heights, if you will, in the vegetation to kind of draw your eye up that hill. So, uh, you know, just, just something uh, of visual interest. It, meanwhile, on their front side lot, they have this beautiful round uh, set of plantings here and then uh, really kind of um, framed it up nicely with some of these, um, I think they're horse chestnut trees, if I recall. <clears throat> Let's move along further down the shore, and uh, I want to call attention to this one. There's a rock retaining wall here because we had quite a bit of um, terrain tearing roughness up in there, so I wanted to mask that with the rock retaining wall. But then it lent, it, it lent itself very lended? What is that? Lent itself very well to having a, a side yard with tile and then planter boxes, uh, it, a couple of sets of planter boxes with a hedge of roses running down the middle of it. So a nice clean look, uh, very clear that, you know, one yard begins and the other yard ends. And then of course their side yard had uh, some additional flowers, some bushy grasses and uh, a larger tree which I believe was a live oak dropped in there. And then our last house coming down the, uh, down the row at the end of the road really is, it is kind of giving way to these boulders and rocks and some of that leafy overgrowth, those ferns and ground cover. So what I wanted to do is tie in with that and, and bring some, some grasses along that some of that ground cover is making its way through here and then give them a pop of color with that beautiful flowering tree here and a couple of evergreens to just frame it up uh, a little bit. Now let's jump up to this, to this yard. This one was fun as well. So side yard and backyard with some tiles in there. And then we came in with a circular gravel path, uh, a nice uh, water feature in the center, some plantings, and then framed it up nicely with some bushes. So this just has this, this elegant look and feel. Just finished and clean. Nestled into all of the chaos that we've been going through is is the inn. We, we placed a historic old inn, and I really love that, the way that this one ties into the types of buildings that are in this area. It just has that old world look and feel, and, and uh, you know, so it, I think it tidies in, it ties in nicely, and then we tidied it up with this side yard getting some, um, you know, some overgrowth plant, plantings, and then a tall palm tree to really, you know, draw your eye upward, but also some beautiful colors here and some softness. Okay, now let's get on up to the city hall area and um, really take a deep dive into that. So the city hall, you know, is at the end of that broad boulevard and then we framed it up, just cleaned it up with some birches because you can't be the city hall of Birch Bay without having birch trees. Am I right? Am I right? Okay, so we got birch trees. We've got some plantings that come along and frame that up nicely and then on the you know, on this side of it, I put a gravel walking path and then added some, some pops of color just to create some lightness. Because the city hall, the way that it's structured and the way it's built is, it can be a little bit of a heavy building. So I thought, 
you know, by adding in some pops of color and, and, and some softness, some curves, might just help to, I don't know, soften it up a little bit. I, I can't imagine it's still the city hall of Birch Bay with uh, the city growing as large, you know, as large as it is. Um, so maybe it's now it's a repurpose. Maybe it's on the historical register and it, you know, it can't be messed with. But um, it might be a building now that's uh, really kind of more of a museum, if you will, of, of Birch Bay. And then out behind it, you see this plaza that we've created using um, some nice red brick pathways, uh, some, some bright colors. Again, trying to make it nice and cheery and open and bright. Uh, and, and giving the city hall some, some space, some space to breathe a little bit. And then I dropped in some zoo plazas, one, two, and then a park plaza here as, as kind of be, the beginning to that, that buffer, if you will, that buffer space between Queen Anne Park, as we'll zoom out here, as you can see, Queen Anne Park, and then what will soon become Sturgeon Square. And Sturgeon Square is going to have a very look and, different look and feel and vibe than Queen Anne Park. So I wanted to make sure that we created some sort of a green space in between the two so it becomes really apparent which one's which. Not that you'd get it confused. I mean, I just, you know, just, I just wanted to give it a little breathing room. So there you have it. There you have it. That is Queen Anne Park. And that wraps up our episode for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I mean, I really enjoyed this build because it is so unique. It is so different. And the intent was to really create a neighborhood that, that stood out within Birch Bay. So with that being said, I'm going to bid you adieu. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Again, wherever you are, whenever you are, thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.